Hello, my name is Matt Harrington. This is a short little lightning talk that I prepared for the San Francisco Bay.net user group um, for on uh, June 16th, 2010, and I'm just getting around to making a screencast of it right now. Uh, it'll be on variants in .NET 4. On the screen here is my, my blog, my email, feel, feel free to email me, and my Twitter handle if you'd like to follow me. So there are two books that I used to prepare this that are very good. Um, on the left, we have Introducing .NET 4.0 by Alex Mackey. The code that I'll talk about in this talk is from that book. And on the right is Essential C Sharp 4.0 by Mark Michaelis, another excellent book on C Sharp. So during this brief talk, I will uh, define what covariance and contravariance mean. I will explain some problems in .NET 1 and 2. And I'll show you what's fixed in .NET 4. So covariance and contravariance boils down to an answer to this very simple question. If apple inherits from fruit, does a basket of apples inherit from a basket of fruit? And I've used basket here as just an example of a collection. So this is talking about supertypes and subtypes, inheritance and collections, and how it's all related together. So let's start with some definitions. Covariance allows an item to be treated as its supertype. Contravariance is the opposite of that, and invariance means that neither of these terms applies. It, re it really boils down to just this. So let's see what was happening in .NET 1.0. So of course .NET 1.0 came with arrays. And let's take a look at this code. In the first two lines, I define a class called animal. And I define a class called elephant, which inherits from animal. In lines 3 and 4, I create an array of animals. And I populate it with elephants. And then on the last line, I assign the first element in the array to a new animal. So try to think about what would happen uh, in .NET 1.0, or in, I guess in any version of .NET, when, um, when you type this in, when you compile it, and when you run it. If you want to pause the video right now uh, and think about it, go ahead. I'll count to five silently. So what happens is that the code compiles just fine, but at runtime it throws an exception because you can't put an animal into an array of elephants. I guess that kind of makes sense, but it is kind of bad that it compiles just fine but throws this runtime, it throws this exception at runtime. One of the whole points and benefits of a statically typed language is that you can catch these kinds of errors or catch errors regarding the type system uh, at compile time. And .NET arrays are covariant because Java arrays are. So back during the design phase of .NET, um, the decision was made to make arrays covariant because there were just legions of Java programmers out there who understood covariant arrays, and they wanted to be familiar to those programmers. So in .NET 2.0, we got generics. So in the first two lines, we have a list of animals, and then we add um, to the list of animals, we add an elephant, and that works just fine. In lines 3 and 4, we have a list of elephants, and then we try to add an animal to a list of elephants, and that won't compile. So that makes sense, too. So the take-home lesson here is that in .NET 2, generics are invariant by design. So it fixes the, the issue with um, arrays that I had on the last slide when they were introduced in .NET 1.0. So you think the, you'd think that you'd be uh, we'd have this problem all fixed, but wait a second here. Here we have um, an I list of elephant called elephants, which is a list of elephant, and on the second line we have an I enumerable of animal called animals, and we assign that to elephants. So maybe you want to pause this video again and think about what would happen. I'll count to five silently. Well. The answer is that it won't compile, and you get this error that uh, you cannot convert an I list of elephant to I enumerable of animal. Are you missing a cast? And the um, if you think about it, this really should be able to compile. You uh, this is type safe, and yet it doesn't. So that was the problem that was addressed in .NET 4.0. And um, this quote from Anders Heilsberg is relevant. It, uh, covariance and contravariance is all about allowing you to do things in your code that previously you were surprised that you couldn't do. 
So in .NET 4.0, we have covariance, and it's done with the out parameter modifier. So out tells the compiler that animal will only ever be returned. That is to say, in the output position, it lets you use t or a subclass of t. This works because you can't add items to an i enumerable after it's declared. So take a look at this code here. Um, we have the i list of elephant elephants, and then an i enumerable of animals, and we assign that to elephants, and that works in .NET 4.0. And take a look at what I've highlighted in blue there. So the i the i enumerable of animals, uh, of animal, uh, works because in .NET 4 the interface i enumerable has been changed and now has the out parameter modifier in front of it. So uh, the last three lines of this slide show three interfaces that have been changed in .NET 4 to support covariance. And in contravariance, you use the in parameter modifier. So in tells the compiler that the parameter can only occur in the input position. And here's a list of interfaces and delegates that have been changed in .NET 4 to support contravariance. So in Visual Studio, you can take a look at these things and you can see that they all have the in parameter modifier in front of them to support contravariance. The take home lesson here is that you can add the out and in parameter modifiers to your own interfaces and delegates to support covariance and contravariance. So back to one of the earlier slides, what about arrays that we learned about in .NET 1.0? Well, unfortunately, there's no solution for them. You'll, we still have the problem that's outlined on one of the earlier slides. There's just too much code out there, and switching, switching how arrays, switching the behavior of arrays uh, this late in the game would have so many breaking changes that it just can't be done. And it's a probably just a minor, um, minor issue, and one that one that once we know about, we can avoid. So, in summary. Um, arrays will give you uh, uh, with arrays your code will compile, but you'll throw a tight mismatch exception at runtime, and that's not great because you don't want to you don't want to throw an exception when there's really just a problem with your typing. You'd rather have the compiler catch that at compile time, but oh well. In generics, we can catch the problems at compile time. However, you can it's possible to write type safe code that doesn't work, but it should, and that's when I introduced that quote from Anders about this. So co and contravariance fix this problem. Covariance allows an item to be treated as its supertype. Contravariance is the opposite of that. It's only for interfaces and delegates. It's only for reference types, not value types. I didn't touch on this in this brief little lightning talk, uh, but that's the case. You use out, the out parameter modifier, to enable covariance. You use the in parameter modifier to enable contravariance. And several interfaces and delegates in .NET 4 have already been modified to support covariance and contravariance. You'll see the same behavior in C Sharp and VB.NET, because there's parity between the, lang the two languages with respect to features. And if you'd like to know some more, feel free to email me at this email address on the screen. And um, you can follow me on Twitter if you like. Thanks for watching.